Thank you for clicking on the video. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, the main reasons why I collect physical media here in my home theater. So stay tuned. Okay, so this is a topic that has been discussed at length at, uh, on numerous channels all over YouTube. So if you do a quick YouTube search, you're going to find uh, various YouTubers all throughout the community that have talked about this topic. And so I'm not going to go into, you know, reasons for other people to collect uh, physical media. I'm basically going to talk about my reasoning for why I collect it. Uh, if you want to go and you know, hear other people's opinions about collecting from, you know, very basic stuff of like, oh, just collecting for artwork or collecting steel books, all the way up to more in depth uh, analysis about like, you know, collecting for the sake of archiving uh, media, you know, and stuff that's not on streaming services and all this stuff. Uh, just do a quick YouTube search. You know, it's it's out there with way bigger channels and stuff than I I have. So it's definitely out there. But today I just want to talk about why I collect physical media. Uh, and there's a couple different reasons for this, uh, which I'm going to start with the, the first one, which is the big one. And that is where I live in central Illinois. I live out in the country. I'm out in a rural section of central Illinois in a small little town, and I don't even live in town. I live out in the country outside of town. And up until about a year ago, give or take a, a little bit there, our internet where I live was absolutely atrocious. Um, I'm talking as bad as <laughs> some third world countries or maybe even worse than some like third world countries. And there are plenty of reasons I'm not even gonna get into for it, but let's just say, I mean, it was so bad, you couldn't stream anything. I mean, that was completely out of the question. Uh, when I got a new cell phone years and years ago, it's a quick little story, uh, the cell phone needed to be updated to the latest iOS as an iPhone. Our internet was so bad because it wouldn't let us use the network features. You had to actually connect to an internet connection to do the update. The internet was so bad and so slow, I couldn't even update my phone. And I had to call in to the internet tech support and explain to them. And they're like, oh, try running a data test speed thing on one of your apps. And it was so slow, I couldn't even load the page to run the like speed test. Uh, that's how bad the internet was where I lived. And it was like that for the entire time we lived here up until about, like I said, about a year ago, give or take, you know, year, 14 months, whatever. And that brings me to my first point with this bad internet. Streaming was basically impossible. Uh, maybe if you timed it just right, you could like stream a show or a movie on Netflix or whatever your streaming service would be, even YouTube, stream something at like the middle of the night at like 2 or 3 a.m. if you were lucky on like a busy weeknight, not over a holiday or something. Uh, but other than that, it was basically impossible to, to stream anything here. So that started the reason and started my collection. Because if we wanted to watch something, you had to have a physical copy because streaming was completely out of the question. So not only did I buy catalog titles, I also at that time bought a lot of new release titles uh, that I would get from various places, you know, wherever. But that was the main reason, the internet being so terrible that we had to buy physical media if we wanted to watch something because streaming was basically out of the question. But that sort of evolved a little bit now because like I said, thankfully for this last year, we actually have an internet provider. Granted, it's through like a LTE connection kind of thing. So it's nowhere near like gig speeds or anything like that that people have in big cities. Uh, but it's usable and we can stream media off of, you know, Netflix or Disney Plus or whatever service you want to, you know, pick there. Uh, so we have that now. So 
physical media isn't the only option for watching something here. So that leads me to my second point, which is now that I can stream stuff when we want to watch, especially like new releases on Disney Plus or Netflix, whatever. Um, the big reason I still buy physical media is because I want the highest quality available to play here in my home theater. So even though you can stream HD and 4K quality off of the various streaming sites, it's still going to be compressed, especially here where we live with our internet. It's at least usable, but it's nowhere near the fastest internet you can get out there. So you're still going to get compression. You're still occasionally going to get buffering and lag where I live here. So buying a physical disc, whether it's a Blu-ray, whether it's a 4K disc with the handful of 4Ks I have, or even a DVD, um, you're going to get better quality in most of those cases, maybe not the DVD, but the Blu-ray and the 4K especially, better quality than what you're streaming through one of the services here at my house. So that's the second you know, point and reason why I collect stuff now is because I want the highest quality available because I want to experience that here in my home theater and I don't want to stream it and deal with the occasional buffering and lagging and you know the bit rates going up and down because like I said our internet is LTE based so you do get these kind of peaks and valleys on there. So that's the second reason. Uh, and then the third reason comes down to just having stuff that I find that's interesting. A lot of streaming sites don't carry everything you can watch. You know, Disney is going to show stuff that's owned by Disney and their companies. And Netflix is going to show stuff that they have the rights to. And Amazon Prime is going to show stuff that they have the rights to and HBO and so on and so forth. You know, it varies by streaming site. So sometimes those sites don't carry at all what you want to watch. If you find something unique out, you know, in the wild when you're looking for stuff uh, or you've got to subscribe to five or six different streaming services to get the coverage of all these movies you could watch or buying it used at a secondhand store, thrift store or wherever, uh, or from a seller like I buy a lot through Facebook Marketplace and whatever, eBay. You could just spend the $5 and buy a Blu-ray and now you've got it and it's here and then you can watch it whenever you want versus having to deal with streaming and finding what service it's on or maybe it's not on there anymore, they took it off, you know, whatever. Uh, so like I enjoy the collecting of finding unique stuff and finding things that aren't on there and just having it in the collection, which also leads to another, you know, a couple just little random things with it. Um, I don't collect for the artwork. I don't collect for special editions necessarily. Um, I just collect because I want the movie and I want, you know, maybe like special features are with it because I do enjoy watching a lot of like the behind the scenes documentaries and stuff, especially with catalog titles. But I don't really care all that much of, oh, I need like a steel book of this movie and alternate versions of the artwork, you know, or steel books that came from multiple different stores that have different artwork on there. That, that stuff doesn't matter to me. And I don't need special collections like, oh, I've got one edition and then one got released later for like an anniversary edition. And I don't I don't need all that. You know, one copy is fine for me of whatever I get. Um, but, you know, I do like collecting for, like I said, the special features, and just because I like the movie. Sometimes, depending when these discs were pressed and made, you're going to see things that haven't been changed because a lot of media, especially catalog titles, have been updated or changed or manipulated in some way from its original theatrical release. And Blu-rays and 4Ks, and especially DVDs, especially if they're early pressing DVDs, have the content more in line with its theatrical release. And it hasn't been edited for different reasons. And that's part of the reason, you know, and I don't want to go way off on a tangent because I want to save it for another video. But that's a reason why I have most, if not all, the old animated Disney uh, hand-drawn animation 
uh, cartoon, you know, movies on DVD, not like Blu-ray or 4K, and I don't really stream them through Disney+. Plus. And that's because the color grading and different effects have been applied to the newer releases, and it somewhat damages the original artistic integrity that was made on those hand-drawn uh, films. You know, and seeing the original artwork in those film cells, uh, a lot of it gets lost because they've updated colors and they've tried to add, like, HDR to them and all this different stuff. And so it manipulates it. So, yeah, the quality may not be as good technically, you know, on a DVD, but it keeps in line with the original theatrical and director and artist intent on there. You know, and that's just one example. There's there's plenty in my collection that are like that. But that's another reason why I like to collect is to try and get things that are more in line with the original theatrical release. You know, like, so that's one example. I, I could talk about, I've got a Terminator 2 DVD that has supposedly the closest thing to the real theatrical audio mix. I have an original Terminator DVD that is the only one uh, I found that has the original mono mix audio on there. Uh, Heat, I have on DVD because it has the original color grading. Uh, the Indiana Jones movies, I have the DVDs because they have the original color grading that wasn't changed uh, before the Blu-rays and then 4Ks came out. You know, so there's a lot of that sort of stuff. Even Aliens, my favorite movie. I have the Blu-ray because it's in a set and the detail and clarity is better, but I also have the DVDs because the DVD still retains the authentic color, color grading because James Cameron altered it a little bit for the Blu-rays. So, you know, it, there's a lot of reasons there, but that's one of the reasons as well now that I've gone past, like, the internet issue of not being able to stream anything. Why I collect is because I want to have movies that are more in line with their theatrical release, their special features that are on there. Um, they're movies that I, I like, you know, and that's a bunch of other YouTubers have talked about this. My collection here on this wall and a little bit I have off to the side here isn't as big as some YouTubers out there. You know, I've only got about seven, six, seven hundred movies, which seems like a lot. But when you look at other people's collections that have like thousands and thousands of movies, it's nowhere near, you know, as big as some of those other collections out there. But I collect mainly stuff that I want to watch that I think is interesting or catalog titles that I want to own. You know, movies I've seen a bunch of times and things that I really enjoy that I just want to own because I love that movie or I love that director or I love that actor that's in it. You know, and that is kind of one of the things I would impart to people is collect what you want to collect and collect what you like. You know, unless you really want to be like an archivist that wants to have just everything under the sun, you know, just collect for the reason you want to collect. Like it doesn't have to be more complicated than that. You know, and that's mainly how my collection has evolved from collecting because we physically, you know, could not watch anything here at our house via streaming to now, you know, I've pared down my collection over the years. I actually just got done doing that a little bit, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, going through and pulling more stuff off the shelves that I kind of went through like, ah, do I really need this? You know, and looking to get rid of it to make more room for some other stuff I bought to put in there. And, you know, I think that's where I'm at right now is just collecting stuff I want to collect for different reasons and then kind of moving other stuff out. But with that, I'm going to say again, like I always do, thank you to everybody who's uh, watched any of my content and liked and subscribed to the channel, uh, you know, left a comment. I really do appreciate it for me. I never thought even now that I would be nearing 100 subscribers and all this stuff. That, that seems so crazy to me. So I, I really do appreciate it uh, to everyone out there that watches or does any of that for me. Uh, like I said, it is, it's humbling and I, I really do appreciate that. So with that being said, uh, I want to say thanks and I will catch you in the next video. Thank you.